Every game with a competitive scene has players that want to be the best, but sometimes this desire for perfection leads them astray, and they turn to less honorable methods. This video covers one such player, who not only faked runs to claim world firsts and status as a top player, but also submitted a number of these fake videos to claim cash bounties. Today we'll be looking at how he faked the runs, why they weren't detected initially, and what happened after he was caught. But before we get into it, don't attempt to contact the person discussed in this video. The community has handled the situation, and anything else at this point is only going to make things worse. To understand the cheating methods we'll be analyzing, you'll need to get familiar with some terminology used in the community. So here's a briefer. The first term is highway, and it refers to the section of the game that looks like the neck of a guitar. It's where the notes you'll be playing come from, and it has one other part the hit window, that serves as the hitbox for when you can register a hit on a note. Since you play the game with two hands, each hand is given a different name. The fret hand is the one that's responsible for holding the guitar neck and will be located near the buttons most of the time. The strum hand, or tapping hand, is the hand used to strum the guitar and tap additional notes in the sections that require lots of inputs. When it comes to notes, there are three types. Strum notes, which require the strum bar to be hit when playing them, hammer-ons and pull-offs, or hopos, which are strings of white-topped notes that only require the first note to be strummed, and tap notes, which are transparent notes that require zero strumming. When it comes to the different types of notes, there are strategies and techniques for hitting them when playing at high speeds, but we'll be looking at these as they become relevant, because we're now ready to look at the event that started the entire controversy. The first song we're looking at is called Nine Patterns of Eternal Pain, a notoriously hard song, but not impossible, as a player named Nados uploaded a Tech FC on May 23rd, 2021. So what's a Tech FC? A Tech FC is a segmented run where players will grind out each section independently until they have perfected it without dropping the combo meter. These runs are meant to show that while playing the full song may not be plausible, it is possible, and once a Tech FC is uploaded, players typically start grinding for a regular FC. On December 14th, notable clone hero player Shmui would upload a video claiming to have beaten 9 Patterns FC without the use of segmented sections. The community saw this as an insane achievement, as it was thought to be near impossible, but Shmui had the resume to pull it off, with other incredibly difficult FCs under his belt. There was one problem with Shmui's FC, and on January 8th, 2022, Another top player named Jobu would notice that certain hand movements in the video didn't look correct for this section. He asked fellow top player Ghost Force to explain the methods for this section, and Ghost's explanation was different from what Shmui was doing on screen, so Jobu dug a bit deeper. If you look at this section of notes at 212 in the video, you'll see a ton of tap notes, but by using a technique called zigzagging, players are able to clear this section with some practice. To do a zigzag, you anchor the lowest note of the section by holding it down, then as the other notes appear, you can hit them with your fret hand by using a special grip. The grip has you apply different levels of pressure with each finger, so that when you perform the technique at fast speeds, you press the notes in ascending order, and when you let your hand up, the fingers on the higher notes get let up in a way that the descending section of notes are performed as well. When zigzagging is used at sections with too many notes for your fret hand to do on its own, your tap hand will get involved so you can alternate presses with each hand while anchoring the lowest note with your fret hand, and it has a distinct visual appearance when being used so pro players can identify it with ease. With the section at 212, there is a segment of notes that goes green, red, yellow, red, that requires a zigzag while anchoring the green, with your tap hand being required to hit a zigzag starting on red, due to the volume of red notes. As can be clearly seen in the video, Shmui is only hitting red with his fret hand, the tap hand is only hitting notes from yellow to orange, but mysteriously, the red notes are all getting hit. This piece of evidence is bad enough on its own, but if you look at the end of the video, you'll see something else. At the end of Shmui's video, the UI for Windows Media Player appears on the screen. This was a red flag, and Jobu also noticed that after the Media Player UI appeared, there was more audio present after the Media Player ended. Let's take a listen. Oh my god. 
If the media player recording was finished, why was there additional audio? Let's take a listen to Shmui's response from the voice call where he was confronted. Why at the end is there a UI there for Windows Media Player? Because whenever I recorded via video pad, it, uh, the rendering is all and I had to re-record on OBS. The video being re-recorded doesn't explain why there was extra audio after it finished playing. And the going theory is that he played over a re-recorded video, but what about the inputs not matching? When the other top players confronted him about the inputs, he denied that anything shady was going on with this or any of his other runs, and gave the response that he was hitting a quint, which is a four-button zigzag with one hand. Yeah, like you said you were fretting a quint. Um, yeah, because that's what enables the overtap. In the way, it's the way like being sin hit quints, like in general, like a uh, descending, yeah, particularly uh, descending quints are just like really intricate quad patterns. Like, well, where are you? Totally where are not fretting a quint though? Where are you yes, doing the fret? Which finger is responsible for two? As Ghost and Jobu pointed out, it's clearly not the case that he's hitting a quint, as his tap hand starts at the yellow button, which means only blue and orange were beneath it. Meaning not only was this not a quint, but it wasn't even a movement that would clear this section of notes. Shmui maintained that this run was legit throughout the entire call, despite other issues being brought up. But this was just the start of the investigation. Since he was a top player held in high regard by the community, the mods wanted an airtight case before they confronted him so that there weren't any doubts about the authenticity of their claims and they shifted focus to his upload of a tech FC of Through the Fire and the Flames on 250% speed. On June 19th, 2021, Shmui would upload a video claiming a tech FC of Flames at 250% speed. Since it was a tech FC, the various segments are allowed to be spliced together, as each section is run independently, then edited to show the full song. You're likely wondering what could have went wrong with a video that's allowed to be segmented together. And that's what the mods thought as well, since the video was taken down a couple hours after it was uploaded, with Shmui claiming it was copyright strike. They brought this video up during their confrontation with Shmui, and after a long back and forth, he had this to say. The vid of flames did get taken down by strike, but I will say this is one of the few times in which I tried to do anything suspicious. While he maintained that the video was copyright strike, he admits that this was one rare instance where he did do something against the rules. And instead of telling the mods what he did, he showed them this section of video. Let's have a look to see if you can spot it as well. If you didn't catch it, don't feel bad. It took a couple of seconds for it to dawn on the other players as well. Oh. Oh my god. How the f yeah. Oh, Shmui had spliced a segment in one of the sections where the score visibly rewinds on screen, and Clone and Guitar Hero have no mechanic where score will be subtracted from a player, so it was clearly a splice. This was obviously why the video was taken down, but Shmui maintained that it was copyright strike. But luckily, someone downloaded the video before it was taken down the first time. And on being re-uploaded, the video didn't receive any content ID or copyright strike. Shmui stuck to his story, and he alluded to two other videos that he may have faked when showing them this. So they naturally asked, which videos were they? At this point, he pauses for a long while, and Jared remarks that there must be a lot more if he can't immediately pick out which videos he faked. Come on, I think you know what they are. No, dude. Trust me, you guys are like... Well, then there's gotta be a lot. There's gotta be a lot, then. And that suspicion turned out to be correct, because along with the two other videos Shmui admitted to faking, there were a lot more. So let's have a look at the Apollo 22 Plus Plus FC he uploaded on November 18th, 2021. This video is a bit unique. There haven't been any splices detected or any instances where the inputs don't match what's happening on screen. Although the webcam feed is much darker in this video, so it's hard to tell exactly where he's pressing the buttons. Aside from the ambiguity with button presses due to the lighting, this video looks correct, except for one detail near the very end. If you look at the highway as the song is ending, the scroll speed slows down, 
which doesn't happen in normal gameplay. I've put the game feed from Shmui's Apollo FC on screen next to another player's run on the same song, and you can clearly see that their highway maintains the same speed up to the point that it fades out. So what's going on in Shmui's run? There's a piece of software called Cheat Engine that lets you do a lot of things in various games. For Clone Hero, it allows you to slow down a song and complete it. Then speed the recorded video back up to whatever speed you want, which allows for seemingly perfect cheated runs to be performed, except for this small detail. When a run is slowed down, then sped back up in Cheat Engine, the highway at the end of the song will slow down, which is exactly what you see happening in Shmui's video, but this thread runs just a bit deeper. At a live meet for Clone Hero, a community member was on Shmui's desktop looking for a clip of him to put into a compilation video. When he pressed the start button for Windows, Cheat Engine was in one of the top results for recently used software. There's no reason that a player needs Cheat Engine, since Clone Hero already has a built-in option to slow down songs for practice. And coupled with the other pieces of evidence we've already discussed, it only makes the situation worse, as Shmui not only had the program on his PC, but its effects were clearly visible in an FC he posted. The previous videos we looked at were examples of cheated runs that were posted as tech FCs or FCs and typically claimed world first status for the achievements that they appeared to be representing. But the most devious videos are the ones that Shmui faked to claim cash bounties. During the call with the other top players, Shmui said on two different occasions that any record he had submitted for a bounty wasn't fake. Yeah, no, I, I can, did. I'll swear of one thing, I did not illegitimize anything on the bounties. Obviously, I am going to look to, because it is serious, because people are going to be skeptical whether or not bounties were involved, which they weren't involved in any of this. That would just be stealing at that point, but even so. He denied faking any of the runs involved with bounties, but what I'm about to show you clearly demonstrates that claim to be false. Tyler Mammonocalypse would regularly post bounties for difficult and challenging songs that members of the community would compete for. And one such bounty was for an FC of Supernovae, which Tyler put up $694.20 for, with another user contributing $200, for a total of $894. Supernovae is an almost 15 minute long song that was released back in 2018, with the first ever tech FC for the track being posted by Frith in 2019. It has some very technical sections, with the chances of making a mistake being very high so a regular FC was going to take a ton of grinding. On May 4th, 2021, Shmui would post a video of what everyone thought to be the very first FC of Supernovae. But when the community became aware that his Nine Patterns video had inconsistencies, they started looking into every run he had ever submitted, and the Supernovae video wasn't being spared any scrutiny. The first thing you should notice about it is that the score counter isn't on screen, which makes splicing a lot easier to do since you no longer have to worry about it rewinding. But this video didn't need a score counter to prove it was fake. If you look at his hands here, you'll see that he's hitting the blue, then red notes with his tap hand, and then hitting yellow, then red with his fret hand, but on the highway, he's hitting red first with each input of his hands. This clearly isn't possible given the inputs that are being performed on the webcam feed, which means the video was spliced, with the game feed being pre-recorded on Cheat Engine, and then played back while Shmui pretends to play over it on the webcam feed. The video has other inconsistencies, such as the webcam and game feed desyncing, and another section where the gameplay is the opposite of what's happening on screen. But the bottom line is that this run was submitted to claim a bounty that it in no way deserved, and that's one of the worst things you can do in a gaming community. Altogether, Shmui would claim almost $3,000 worth of bounties, with the majority of them coming from Tyler Mammonocalypse, and you're probably wondering what happened once all of this came to light so let's take a look. Before the news broke outside of the community, Shmui would only admit to four videos being faked to the mods in the voice call. But while this was taking place, other members of the community had already started an investigation on his other runs, and they found that over 50 of them contained evidence of wrongdoing. One of the players in the call would post a video that went viral on Reddit on January 13th that broke the story to the gaming community at large. And it was a day after this that Shmui would post his apology video. He blames a traumatic experience as the catalyst for his behavior, and has no excuses for what he did. 
He offers an apology to the community and the top players that legitimately worked for their accomplishments. He goes on to announce that he's likely done with playing the game competitively and will only play in a casual capacity, and offers to pay all of the bounty money back that he took from the people that posted them. I'm not going to speculate on the authenticity of the apology, as it's up to the Clone Hero community on if they accept it or not. But I do have good news. On the 15th of January, Shmui paid back the bounties that he took from Tyler and the other members that had posted them. This brings some positivity to an otherwise bad situation, but there's one question we haven't looked at. How did this go unnoticed for so long? If we look at a timeline of what happened, the first run that looks to be fake was uploaded on September 4th, 2019. An FC of Zoidberg's Revenge that contained a lot of sections where the video would skip. Had this been uploaded by an unknown runner, it may have had more verification processes applied to it. But Shmui was a player with the skills to back up this type of achievement, as he played in voice calls with other community members regularly. On top of that, he was friends with a lot of other top players in the community, which may have led to less scrutiny being applied to runs he submitted, since he was genuinely capable of achieving the FCs he claimed to have. This isn't to say the mods did a bad job, as you can see from their reaction in the Flames reveal, it's easy to miss something that in hindsight appears to be obvious, especially when the person cheating is doing their best to mimic the moves that should be occurring. But the unfortunate thing about lying is that you have to remember everything, and the small errors that Shmui made led to his apprehension. The important detail is that he was caught, and the community is being more careful when verifying world record runs. Tyler has stated that any bounty he posts from now on will need to be completed on stream to help eliminate the chance of someone splicing a run. And there's one final thing we need to talk about. Since Shmui's runs that claim to be world first obviously aren't, I'd like to give credit to the runners that actually did achieve the world first FCs for the bigger runs, so be sure to check them out down below. I'd also like to shout out Ghost Forest, Carney Jared, and Jobu for their help with this. They're all great players and deserve recognition for bringing this to everybody's attention. It took courage to confront someone they saw as a friend, and their dedication to the game shouldn't go unnoticed. So please give them a follow. And finally, if you enjoyed the video, please consider checking out my Patreon, as I post bonus content there regularly. And the best place to get updates about what's going on is the community Discord, or by following me on Twitter. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.